with his helm in his head and his lance in his hand, he roams up to the roof of that rough home. Then he heard from that hillock in a hard rock, beyond the brook, in the boulders, a wondrous bad noise. What? It clattered in the cliff, as if it should cleave it, as one upon a grindstone was grinding a scythe. What? It whirred and it wet, as water at a mill. What? It rushed and it rang, horrible to hear. Then, by God, said Gawain, that growling I trust, is a rage so to reverence me and my rank as befitting this plot. Who is master of this homestead that would tryst with me? For now is good Gawain got here as arranged. Abide, came the word from the bank above his head. And you shall have hastily what I promised you. Yet still rolling rapidly he raised the wire, sweating and twirling before he would come down. Then he clambers by a crag and crops up from a hole, whirling out of some dark way with a foul weapon, a Danish axe, and new edged, to yield duly that blow, with a burnished blade bent right down to the shaft, filed on a file stone four foot large. And that guardian in green was geared as first seen, both the look and the legs and the locks and the beard, save he now fed on foot and strides firm on the earth, setting steel to the stone as he stalked beside it. When he wound to the water, and not wishing to wade, he hopped over on his axe and boldly strides, loud bellowing on a big field that broad was about, laid with snow. Sir Gawain that night he greets, but would not bow too low. That other said, Now, sir sweet, to our tryst you have been true.